Mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, kickboxing, grappling, you name it, we'll talk about it. I'm your host for the day, Hakeem Branch. I'm Rob Jarrell. We'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. For our first episode, we're going to be talking about the Knockout Kings 2 card that happened in Texas this past Saturday, and also the UFC on Fox 8, which happened in Seattle. For our first fight, it was Keith Thurman versus Diego Chavez. Two prospects, both of them undefeated, both of them real grinded out. One taking the next level, one going home, someone zero has to go. Um, great fight, did end in the knockout. Keith Thurman really did show, he, he showed some improvements in his game. Um, he does have a much longer way to go. He's the power fighter, he's, he's going to throw bombs all day. Um, and some subtleties in his game. Um, what are some of those subtleties, okay? I like the way he used his jab as a feint to set up his power punches whereas normally you know a normal person would just shoot the jab straight out what he did was throw a flicker like a soft jab just to put the hand out there to get Chavez either raise his hands or duck to either side in which he would work off his left hook uppercut and right hand and that's what set up his knockout later on in the fight that's right even when he set up that knockout I think it came a little bit later than he really wanted it to I mean, Diego Chavez, I've only seen him fight once. I mean, he's a really tough fight. He's going to grind it out. He really took some bombs, but he came through and landed some flush shots of his own. Oh, yeah, and he, he did land some great shots, and that is a testament to Keith Thurman's chin because he landed some really good right hands, landed a couple of nice uh, left hooks, and Thurman took them, and then he either threw right back or he readjusted and then threw back. He always had an answer for whatever Chavez threw at him. And I like that as well. And as far as Chavez, I think he did a great job too. I mean, he showed the heart. He showed the determination. He showed that he belonged on the big stage. And I think that a lot of people are going to be avoiding him in the future. Now on with Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman, Florida, Florida guy, talks a lot. He's going to talk himself into a big fight. And he has the power to back it up. But he is a, a few fights away from a championship fight. I mean, you've got a lot of young prospects going on at welterweight and even junior middleweight, which he fought a couple fights up. Oh, yeah. Um, I think Keith Thurman is another guy that people aren't going to fight unless they have to. Um, right now, the mandatory for, he's the mandatory for Adrian Broner's belt, which he just beat uh, Paul Malinaji for. And I really don't think that they're going to make that fight between Thurman and Brona. I know they're pushing between uh, Brona and Maidana, but that's not looking like that's going to happen either. So maybe Maidana and Thurman meet like they were intended to for Thurman's HBO debut, and now it's for a title, which means it worked out better for both of them because they get more money. Oh, yeah, and that's going to be one hell of a fight. I mean, Maidana's going to bring the same power, the same grinded out style, and he's oh, just yeah. going to try to bomb them out. Someone's going down. I'm not even giving that 10 rounds if it happens. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I mean, the way Thurman comes at people and just delivers the moon from the opening bell, he'll test you out to make sure you can um, taste his power. And if you can't take it, he's going to get you out of there. If not, he'll step back, adjust, and give it to you in small doses until you can't take it anymore. And we've seen Madonna get hurt by body shots before, so I think Thurman might end up getting him out of there. Well, he's got a bright future. I can't wait to see what his next fight is going to be. All right. The second fight of the Knockout Kings 2 card was Omar Figueroa Jr. versus Nahito Arakawa. And this was a fight of the year type fight. I haven't seen a fight better than this all year. Yeah, it's hands down the best fight we've seen this year. I mean, you had everything on display. You had the heart of Arakawa. You had the power of Figueroa. And you had just punches and bunches and more bunches. I mean, these guys just threw caution to the wind, and they wanted to make sure that not only did they put on a show, that they were going to give it their all in doing so, and they didn't care how 
dirty it got. They didn't care how many times they got hit. They wanted to make sure that they left everything in that ring to secure that win. That's right. Omar Figueroa Jr., I've seen his past five fights. You're talking about a guy who can throw crisp punches. Um, he likes to fight aggressive. He likes to go in there and get people out. His last three fights didn't go bad to the second round. Right. His last fight, Abner Cotto, he just got him out of there very quick. And he, Abner Cotto didn't stand a chance. Even as a prospect, he was a little shaky. And uh, Omar Figueroa just exposed him on that one. Oh, yeah. And um, I recall this was our first time seeing him. He had only fought once outside of Japan. I think that was in Mexico. He had lost that fight. But he showed up here. He showed he was ready to go. He showed he wasn't here to lay down and just take a paycheck. And if if he was to have his way that night, he was leaving with that uh, interim title. The one thing about Arakawa that I was very impressed with, even though he took some bombs, he kept throwing. Um, he took a few hooks. Uh, he, well, he actually took a lot of hooks. Uh, <laughs> most of the shots in the fight were power shots. Right. But he kept one to one. He, um, he kept his hands moving. And even pushed Arakawa against the ropes. No, I'm sorry. Right. Push Figueroa against the ropes. And that's the point I was going to bring up. I mean, he not only did he land some good crisp punches, but he did bully him around a bit. That's something that uh, Figueroa's team is going to have to look at because as he gets into those bigger lightweights that are um, the title holders, he's going to need to add a little bit more physicality to his game. Yeah, he's going to have to possibly even work on some road work or get a few more rounds in because his legs just seem to be gone against those ropes where he couldn't get off the ropes, get away, because our car was just right in his chest. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. All right, so um, let's move on to the main event because we have a lot of things to talk about with this, which was Andre Berto versus Jesus Soto Carras. And one of the things that we wanted to point out was it's been in the news a lot about Berto's failed steroid tests and how he's perceived in the media because of that. And what they don't cover is that he was later cleared of those charges where it was shown that the substance that he was accused of taking was not a significant enough amount to even enhance his performance, but it's shown to be something from either a tainted supplement or some food that he had ingested. But you know, Berto has that very muscular look. He's very athletic. He's very explosive and quick. So they want to take it into account and they want to apply that to steroids instead of just being a natural gift or hard work. Right. And... Hey, maybe he was on them before, maybe he has taken them in the past, but for this instance, it was not the case. So, I think we should move on from that, let him do what he has to do, and show what he has in the ring, which he did against Soto Carras. That with a messed up shoulder, we don't know what happened to it yet, but we did see that he injured it in about the third or fourth round. Yeah, he had obvious discomfort. He was shaking it, trying to loosen it up, but at a certain point, about the fifth round back, he just couldn't throw it, which was a problem for him because his bread and butter is his counter right uppercut, oh, yeah. which he which he was landing at will. Every time Karras leaned in or he threw that jab, he would just throw the right uppercut. And don't let uh, Soda Karras go in with his uh, left hook. If it missed, he's throwing it right up, and he, may, he even followed with the overhand right right after that. But... He couldn't even keep the hand up to defend, and Berto, his offense is his defense. He doesn't have great head movement, so basically he couldn't really throw how he wanted to. Yeah, that was the point I was going to bring up. Uh, Soto Karras touched him a lot, and it wasn't even with the left hook that he finished the fight with. He landed a right hand repeatedly over the top, and Berto was still trying to use the shoulder roll, which a lot of people uh, detract him for for doing in the Guerrero fight. But he was doing it before even then he was using the shoulder roll. And it wasn't really using it to a great effect. So, there's something that him and Virgil Hunter can work on as they study the tape to see how they can get his defense up to par as he rebuilds his career from here. Yeah, that's right. And let's remember, this is Vir this is his first fight with Virgil Hunter. So, I mean, they're still working out the new wrinkles, trying to get everything straight. Um, he might have bitten off a little bit more that he could shoot fighting Solo Carras. Oh, yeah. was a very tough, very rugged fighter. So at this point, I mean, it, it was a tough task to go in there and try to win against a fighter of that caliber. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. And he fought his heart out. Even with one hand, he did some great work with the left hand, using his jab, using his hooks and uppercuts to the body. He even scored a knockdown late in the fight. And a last note for this fight, the scoring was absolutely atrocious. I mean, one judge had Berto ahead, 
one judge had it a draw and one judge had Soto Carrasso. I think that was a fight that Soto Carrasso was clearly ahead in and he should have been able to secure a comfortable decision had he not taken it into his own hands and knocked Berto out. That's right. I mean, I would at best have given Berto four rounds, one for the knockdown, which he was even closer to even because Soto Carrasso got up off the canvas, kept firing away, and most of his punches made his mark. So um, I, I would say about four rounds, just about the time that he, uh, he injured his right hand, you could see the difference in the fight. But again, the good thing, which you can take from this fight, is that he can use his left hand. He landed a lot of shots with his left foot to the body and upstairs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So let's hope that he can rebuild his career and give us some more exciting fights. Let's move on to the UFC on Fox 8, where we're only going to talk about the flyweight title fight between Demetrius Johnson and John Moraga. That was where the most uh, significant action happened. And in that fight, we saw one of the most technical displays of skill that you could see in the octagon. I mean, Demetrius Johnson was always moving, using his angles, using his strikes, and it looked like he was always looking for the finish. I mean, I don't see how no one can like this dude. I mean, sure, it's like one of the smallest weight classes, but his speed, his power, and his technical skill are just far above the rest. Even though it did go five rounds in that fifth round, he made it look awesome. Right. He went for the finish and with someone who he was thoroughly dominating, and which you really can't ask for much more. I mean, he was perfect for his takedowns against an all-American wrestler, and now he's looking for big, bigger things with, he mentioned, uh, a unification with the Bantamweight champion, which is either Renan Burrell or Dominic Cruz, who are both injured. I hope, I hope uh, Dana White makes this very worthwhile because this guy always puts on the display every time out. All right, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. This is the first episode of Capital Combat. Leave a message down in the comment section on anything you want us to talk about. We'll discuss it. It'll be just like we're having an open discussion with you guys. And we look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for joining in. Peace.